In the slate across the board this week in week seven is not it's not great. It's not that great of a slate. And no. whenever you're talking about greatness of slates, we're not talking about how games could potentially end up, but there isn't that many like consequential games, even though it's only week seven. You look at the Chiefs, Titans, two teams, four and two, two teams coming off of big time identity games for themselves, I believe. Second half of that Washington football team game for the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes seemed to come alive. That team seemed to look great, seemed to get things back on track, but he did have to deal with his brother being a fucking asshole on mm-hmm. the internet. True. So per I mean, usual. Ma- ma- does seem to potentially be a thing this past weekend, though, was despicable. Can't Uh do it. How do you even get there, though? I don't know. It feels more. It feels a lot like the Washington football team was, you know, messing up a lot of things this weekend. So maybe it's fifty on them, fifty on Little Mahomes. Yeah, right. it's still you got to have the wherewithal to be like, oh, they're retiring this guy's number today. I probably shouldn't be fucking standing Especially right on it. Especially because he grew up in a, a professional athlete family, right? Everybody talks about how Pat's dad was a major league baseball player mm-hmm. and he's been around and everything yeah. like that. And so that means Jackson also has, right? That right. means the same yes. exact thing. And, in that, and that would be something that I think you would learn, you know, through your life. Like, okay, we we pay respect to, you know, those who were OGs before us and everything like that. So I think definitely on him. Yeah. Well, But also, how the fuck yeah. were they even standing there? The Chiefs fans are being like, well, that was the VIP area. They were told to stand in that area. But like... When I go to a funeral and they're like, hey, go stand over there by the casket, I don't then jump on top of the casket and then dance on top of it. Yeah, it's true. true. I just don't understand. Like, why, why the hell does he need to be on the field before the game? What are you talking about? Like, dude, go watch the fucking game up in the box. No, nah, sideline passes for the star of the side. I yeah, mean, he I, does no. it every game, though. Yeah, well, that's his thing. Yeah, it's his... It's his I'm it's, done with it. Well, it's, it, you're, not, you're not even... Halfway through season three, of this. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, what I you know. Mean? I it better is... get comfortable. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, this, this is, is the thing. Yeah, this is a thing. Yeah. And by the way, there's probably ten to fifteen seasons of this particular show. Wow. Well, yeah. Which is the Jackson dance on the thing before the thing thing. And maybe you know his dad was in the in major leagues, and maybe he did grow up with it, or maybe his dad was like, "Hey, Pat, you can come with me to the games, but leave your fucking little brother at home because I hate that kid so much. I can't whoa, stand him." Whoa. But hey, that's just that's just something that might have happened. That I was don't too know. far. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> unless it happened. Well, if it happened. I haven't Listen. seen many videos with Little Mahomes ah, there. I've only seen right. him with Pat. Okay, anyways. But Pat d- did have to deal with that a little bit, I yeah. guess. I'm sure he's past it. But that team, second half, seems to have found it. Them playing the Titans coming off the Derrick Henry 3 Tud game. I mean, that is a fantastic game. I'm very happy that this game is happening this weekend because it's huge. Bengals-Ravens, AFC North matchup. 4-2 and two Bengals just beat the fucking brakes off yep. the line. Oh, not man. even close. Right. See, just... Blow the dog out. shit right. was kicked okay. out of yeah. the Lions. Right. Never a doubt. You know, there's a couple weeks there where the Lions were scraping and crying. Yeah. Arr, 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 arr. Crawling back into it. And at the end, they, they lost in, in heartbreaking fashion. In, thi- in this particular one, the Bengals marched into the Lions' den. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Lions Den. And literally just did, is this how Bengals Pete? Did they lift their leg? I'm not 100 percent sure. All oh, yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. And this was supposed to be the one where Sheila Ford Ham and uh, yeah. MC DC and everybody. Sheila. This was supposed to be the game they get their first win. They yep. get off the Schneid. Everybody's yeah. Foxy had actual hope, it seemed like. Yeah. The internet was even saying, Oh, Lions plus six, this is a lock or whatever it was. Like that was a, a an overwhelming and then Joey Burrow went in there and just yeah, beat yeah. the fuck out of him. Yeah, yeah and if you guys thought that one was bad, wait till this Sunday when the Lions go to L.A. and have to play Matthew Stafford. Oh, oh Jared Goff uh, reunion, wow. Jared! Wow. Revenge, revenge game. Jared Goff, I'm coming home. I'm coming, home. I'm coming home. home. Open the golf course. I'm coming, coming home. home. Jared Goff, coming back to L.A., dude. Yeah. With so much confidence going into this game, too. Yeah, because MCDC was saying, hey, we all got to step it up. Oh, you you yeah. can be better is what MCDC said. We just got to step it up. Whatever the case, Matthew Stafford over. And yeah. what, everything. Touchdowns, yeah. I mean, yards, I 50 on him. rush yards, you name it. Sean McVay uh, this morning had half his face cut off on yep. uh, Good Morning Football. But the headline, I didn't get to see it or hear it. But I saw the headline said um, uh, McVay... Uh, did not handle the Jared Goff trade yeah. perfectly. He said he would say that and agree with that. 
Well, you know, maybe Jared Goff's coming back with a oh yeah. A fucking point to prove. A chip dude. on his shoulder. He was just shipped out of town. You guys pay me $100 million and trade me away for mm. a bag of balls, dude? And Matthew Stafford and like seven other things have to come in, come in return or whatever? What What's going on? I'm going to come dominate out here with my wide receiver named Quintez Cephas. And, yeah. And my out. Hawk. And, uh, and he's out. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, gone. <laughs> he's gone. Hawk. Uh, Swift. TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. I think McVay only said that because he goes, wow, I didn't expect golf and the Lions to be this bad. Now I feel bad for what I did to that man. I don't think so because I think McVay sees what Stafford's doing. Yeah. He's like, man, this is wow. awesome. This I won. Is, we're exactly right. When I was down there in Mexico and Cancun, I couldn't have dreamed of anything. Like, you were really cool. We had a couple beers together. Our families got to hang out. This is before, during, and after the trade was taking mm -hmm. place where we sent three first-rounders out of there for you. But, man. This is much better than we could have ever met. You you are polar opposite of what Jared Goff is. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> Do you know that? It is crazy. We benched Jared Goff at the end of the season because he had a little cut on his hand or whatever. We didn't yeah. know what it was going to take. Actually, in the playoff game, we said, hey, Jared Goff, we don't want, we don't want you yep. to start. Mm -hmm. I made that decision. A lot of people are talking about it, but it wasn't being talked about as loud as it probably should have because they just paid their franchise guy, and they were ipso facto benching yeah. said player in mm -hmm. the playoffs in the biggest thing. Then he gets traded, that whole thing. McVay's like, I want to let you know, man, you get your hand cut off. We'll have you play lefty. Yeah. yeah. We will still start you. <laughs> like, that is what it feels like McVay is with Stafford as opposed to what the Goff thing is. But is this just the honeymoon phase? And will Jared Goff get a chance to say anything after getting his ass beat by the Bengals last? Mm. Probably not, if I had to guess. Probably I, not. I no assume way. the Rams. Lions are in trouble. Lions are in trouble. I think so. But th maybe the Ravens are in trouble because this Bengals team is legit. This is the first time in a long time I think some people believe that the Bengals could be an actual team. Now, them beating the hell out of the Lions is not necessarily the case. A lot of teams that have beat the hell out of the Lions over the years have not been an actual team. True. Right? right. That is something that is... How about the, the Lions? The Bears? Hey, the Lions are really taking it on the shins right yeah. now. Well, well, they well, do every single year. I, I mean, you notice last week was the first time we didn't get... A, These guys played so fucking hard. No, he got mad. He, he, he got that's, sick of that's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the, the honky-dory, I love you guys. You're going to go out and compete for me, man. Like, that, that stage is over. Now yeah. it's now he's gonna turn into a fucking horse's ass, I think. And if Whoa. they don't, if they don't oh. keep winning, if That's they if they don't win, no, it's just different modes and different times. I assume next off season it'll be the same thing. If they start winning, MCDC will do his thing. He's trying to <laughs> figure out how to motivate this team yeah. that has been cursed for decades. He's trying to figure out how to beat them. And a lot of people are saying maybe it is like a Ted Lasso situation. Yeah. Maybe he is sure. able to come into FC Richmond and turn that whole thing around. Maybe he is able to come in there, yeah. put a believe sign up on the wall, people pat it, put <laughs> some sage in the goddamn training room, mm -hmm. and get the curse out of there. But I think it's all just going to take about a $2 million check to Calvin Johnson. Bingo. And then maybe they'll have a chance if they, uh, you know, maybe get some better players on the team. With all that being said... Bengals Ravens is going to be a great game. <laughs> yeah. Great game. I'm sorry, Zito. You said something about the Bears there. I couldn't hear it because your voice is a little bit lower there. Yeah, I said uh, the last oh, time they played God. the Bears, Jesus. they lost. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, you, did you just get out of a mob meeting? Did you, I did, yes. You sitting at the head of the table? Or? I'm sitting right at the head of the table, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you're all right. We hope Thank you feel you, better. Yeah. Sorry you're going through this, Zito. You're the best, dude. Uh, Bengals Ravens, big time game, though. Okay, that's yeah. a huge yeah. game. Excited to see that. Um, Bears, Bucks. I guess you can call that a big game because the Bucks are in it. Mm. Justin Fields looks like he's going to be great. Aside from that, there's not a lot of games this weekend that we think, oh, these are must wins, have to win. This is a big game going in the future. A lot of kind of piss poor matchups with six teams on bye this weekend. Don't what do you leave mean? out Sunday night, baby. That's Sunday night game. That's a big game. Electricity is going to be Niners in the air. lose with being behind the Rams and the Cardinals is tough. Colts, you can't lose if the Titans are getting hot. Listen, the Niners go to two and five when they lose to the Indianapolis Colts, or the Colts go to two and six whenever they lose if they lose to the Niners. Both devastating blows. Yeah, absolutely. That is going to be tough to come back from. But if they win that, both of them, three and four still, three and five still. I, I don't know how. It's not. I mean, it's a great game. Two teams that I think going into the season, everybody were like, all right, here we go. We got some squads. But you're right. If the 49ers go to two and five? Four. They had a bye last week. Two and four. If the Niners go two and four, they're in that division. They're going to yeah. be dead. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why we, I think we can all assume they're going to beat the shit out of the Colts. Whoa! I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Jimmy G's back. They had a nice little bye week. Everyone's feeling T.Y. Hilton's back, dude. Yeah, T.Y. Hilton, you know, who knows? He, he hurt his quad. <laughs> uh, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. 
if we're positive not? that he's back, but <laughs> is he back? we do know Jimmy G's back, and it seems as though the Niners will look around the division and say, hey, if we don't win tonight, our season's probably over. T.Y.'s back. All right, let's not get to it. But there is, there's tomorrow night is going to be an interesting game yep. littered with the injuries, and then this weekend there's probably going to be games that turn into great games at the end. I assume there's yeah, going to yeah. be some great matchups. And when that 1 o'clock slate – has like three games that are all ending at about the same time, mm-hmm. and there's a kick needed or this needed. Every it is electrifying. You just gotta wait through like two hours and forty five minutes of some shit yep. to kind of get to that point, and it is fantastic. Uh, to pivot a little bit away from tomorrow night's game and the risk free same game parlay in which we will take millions, and and millions of dollars from FanDuel finally after it smashes and we get hopefully record numbers on that thing so we can all make some money because the game i mean who knows how it's going to go the risk-free same game uh, parlay almost hitting last week was electrifying yeah, yeah. <laughs> that entire time 